Lung compliance is the degree of lung expansion per unit of pressure change. It is calculated by volume change by pressure change. Transpulmonary pressure is the difference between airway pressure and the pleural pressure. When there is increased transpulmonary pressure that causes expansion of the lungs. Compliance measures the extensibility of the lungs. Higher compliance means it is easy to expand the lung and low compliance means stiff lungs or it is difficult to expand the lung. Abnormally low or high lung compliance impairs the patient's ability to maintain efficient gas exchange. Low compliance typically makes lung expansion difficult. High compliance induces incomplete exhalation, air trapping and reduced carbon dioxide elimination. At low compliance, lungs become stiff, the work of breathing is increased. In many clinical conditions like the ARDS, low lung compliance is associated with the refractory hypoxia. Refractory hypoxia means a persistent low level of oxygen in blood that is not responsive to medium to high concentration of inspired oxygen. It is usually caused by intrapulmonary shunting. Patient with non-compliant lung often have a restrictive lung defect, low lung volumes and low minute ventilation. This condition may be compensated by an increased frequency. In extreme high compliance situation, exhalation is often incomplete due to lack of elastic recoil by lungs, emphysema for example. High compliance are often related to condition that increases the patient's functional residual capacity and total lung capacity. Compliance can be divided into two types, static compliance and dynamic compliance. Static compliance is calculated by dividing the volume by the plateau pressure. This measure when the flow is momentarily stopped. The air flow is absent, thus airway resistance becomes a non-factor. Static compliance reflects the elastic resistance of the lung and the chest wall. The dynamic compliance is calculated by dividing the volume by the peak inspiratory pressure. This measured when the air flow is present. As the air flow is present, airway resistance becomes a factor in the measurement of dynamic compliance. Thus, the dynamic compliance reflects the condition of the airway resistance as well as the elastic properties of the lung and the chest wall. A decrease in the compliance means an increase in the work of breathing. In low compliance situation such as the ARDS, pulmonary fibrosis and kyphoscoliosis the decrease in the minute ventilation is characterized by decreased tidal volume and increased frequency. When an abnormally low or high compliance is uncorrected and prolonged, muscle fatigue may occur and lead to development of ventilatory and oxygenation failure. Atelectasis causes an increase of plateau and the peak inspiratory pressure. Since the plateau and the peak inspiratory pressure are increased, the calculated static and the dynamic compliance measurements are decreased. But in case of bronchospasm, the airway resistance is increased, the peak inspiratory pressure is increased but the plateau pressure stays unchanged. Since the peak inspiratory pressure is increased, the dynamic compliance is decreased. The static compliance remains same because there is no change in the plateau pressure. As compliance is determined by volume change by pressure change, TV loop or the pressure volume loop provides useful information on characteristics of patient's compliance. A shift of the slope towards the pressure axis indicates a decrease in the compliance. A shift of the slope towards the volume axis indicates an increase in the compliance.